How's it going? I'm Ben Wolf. I'm uh, the, you can kind of see the title there. I'm a Matt Merger product manager. It's our conflation software. But more importantly today for this audience, I am a production analyst. I don't do any of the coding. Uh, I do take pretty uh, big advantage of the benefits of PostGIS and Postgres, though. I'm joined today by Zane Coleman. He is a geospatial developer, would you call it? Sure. Yeah. Somewhere in between analyst and software. Um, kind of an amoeba of sorts. He fits a lot of different shapes and molds that we have in our operations here in the St. Louis office. Um, so we've got some, uh, we got a success story for you today using Postgres, PostGIS. Um, specifically for our government customer here. So uh, we'll start off by explaining a little bit of background here. L3 Harris was a prime contractor on the Foundation Geospatial Content Management contract that ended recently earlier this year. Uh, we were the a prime contractor for two thirds of the world. You can imagine that's quite a bit of data, in the large databases, um, and we needed an efficient way to handle all of them. So that's kind of where this adventure started. Uh, it was followed by becoming a prime contractor on Project 7 for what is a contract known as Janus. That is, covers essentially the remaining third of the world for us. Um, we've used and developed a software suite called AutoTest Suite. Uh, we've used that to successfully automate QC processes and corrective tasks for each of the AOIs that you can see in this screenshot here. So um, pretty much m most of the world pretty confidently say that this has been run over a ton of data. So on that note, that is so much data, right? So I mentioned earlier that the Earth was broken into three regions, essentially, A, B, and C for Foundation Geospatial Content Management contract. Region A covered Asia and some of North America. That was about, that was over 200 gigabytes of data. Region C was slightly smaller data-wise, uh, covered 144 gigabytes of data. That was AFRICOM and SOCOM. And now Janus Project 7 Region 215 is 289 gigabytes of data. And that covers pretty much everything I haven't already mentioned. So with all of this data, there's bound to be some issues that you run into while processing. We have analysts constantly working on this data, both internal and external. Lots of variables are inserted into the, our general production formula on a daily basis. And some of those can cause problems. We need to find them and we need to fix them. Some of these common errors and issues that come up during production and QC of our databases, I've got listed here, but my favorites in particular I'll mention are line feature merge failures, where we have the endpoints of two lines come together, they have the exact same attribution, and why do we have two features in our database when we could just have one row in our table? Um, that one was a significant time sink that post just help us solve and reduce our man hours spent fixing these errors. Uh, some of the other favorites for me as a production analyst are detecting gaps and slivers in our data where we have boundaries that don't match up vert for vert. That can, is a significant concern for the customer, so it's a significant concern of mine, which means I have to find them and eliminate them. And using PostGIS and Postgres solutions, we've been able to track down efficiently many of these issues which pinpoints our analysts, saving us time and money. Some of the others that I'll mention here just briefly um, some overshoots, a lot of this is topology based, a lot of this involves the geometry side of it, right? So um, we also look at the attribution side. Some of these are tied directly to our geometry, such as um, volumetric data discussed earlier in the chat. Uh, most of ours is 2D. Um, so we also deal with metrics and uh, scale portrayal tables for the Cardo people in here. Um, so a long list of fixes and finds that we've been able to use Postgres and PostGIS for. Uh, this is certainly not an all-inclusive list here. So for those large-scale data problems, we've got some large-scale data solutions. Our code repository contains about 67,000 different function calls. Let you speak to that. Just various uses of whether it's 20,000 ST intersects or we, we use PostGIS <laughs> every day for almost every task when it comes to the database. Can you, can you move in front of the mic? Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Better? Yeah. So we use uh, PostGIS calls every day for almost every task when it comes to uh, 
doing validations or corrections on our database end before it ever meets the analyst's eye. Uh, this gives them a list of things to QC or work off of or auto-populates uh, tables for them to integrate in. Which is a good segue into the next bullet point that I wanted to touch on, which is that operations that used to take seconds per feature, sometimes minutes per feature with some of those wild polygons that you might run into in a large geo geodatabase, now take milliseconds using PostGIS. Post -GIS. And the stuff that Zane and many, many other people have worked on to help develop for us. Uh, one of other, one of Zane's favorite uh, tools here is our feature analysis matching engine. I'll let you speak to that just a little bit. So, the feature analysis matching engine, or FAME uh, for short, it's basically a differential engine. Uh, it takes in two or more data sets, combines and finds the differences between them, whether these two features match. So, you know, in theory, if you had two road networks from two different suppliers and you wanted to compare them, now you've got, okay, these two line up, I can accept those, look at the oddities, look around where one seems to have an entire neighborhood may be collected that the other one doesn't. And you can start validations there instead of worrying about all of the rest of the matching data. So while this doesn't necessarily process or manipulate our data, it can drive us to analysts as pinpoints to help us more efficiently manipulate and correct and address data. So again, we use PostGIS for our metrics. Our metrics are multi-threaded searching by tile, mosaics of databases, something that near and dear to Zane's heart here as well. Um, we use the Postgres SQL, PostGIS, and multi-threaded geoanalysis to accomplish our metrics goals. Um, I mentioned earlier one of my favorites is the line feature merge failure fix. This is actually something we've been able to implement that takes the work out of our analyst's hands. I'm willing to put a percent around 99.9% .9 of the work has been removed from our level of effort um, on this particular error. And personal story, there were multiple databases during some of the FGCM work where I would literally spend hours correcting a few thousand. So to give you kind of an idea of the scale <coughs> and how much time this can save, we had, we've had we had hundreds of databases with tens, hundreds, maybe even you know hundreds of thousands of, of these particular issues. So this is work that has been reduced as far as time by it spent by an analyst or a user to correct, and it's been automated. Um, those features that are not automated for line feature merge failures, where we have those two lines sharing an endpoint with similar attribution, were pinpointed after that. So we've taken advantage of both the geometry fixing application and the pinpointing so that analysts can address some of the more complex situations. Um, another one of my favorites is the gaps and slivers detection. This one is a little more complex. Um, it would require uh, a very robust solution to be able to address this automatically. So instead of spending a lot of time on developing a solution where we'd have to test it, we'd, we found out that it was actually a little bit easier, a little bit more efficient for us to develop a pinpoint method, which even, like I said, it's not automated as far as the fix goes, but the pinpoint method has also reduced the amount of time that analysts have spent looking for these errors or having the errors recur in our data using some of our more traditional methods. Um, this has been indexed using PostGIS, which has decreased the search time, which was another one of the pitfalls of traditional QCing methods, and has improved our true positive error calls. So instead of an analyst visiting a situation that might be called by some of the traditional QC tools and it not being an error, uh, our tool that we developed with PostGIS has in made our processes more efficient, more accurate. Um, and then the last bullet point, which is probably the most interesting to most of us in this room, are the cost benefits. It is free and open source. Uh, so instead of having to rely on some of the larger companies and the you know, more expensive solutions, we've been able to work with crunchy data and implement a lot of these uh, at a cost efficient manner. So I've got some numbers here. This is going to conclude my time up here uh, once we get through this slide and we can open the floor for discussions or questions or applause if you don't want to talk about it. <laughs> uh, so in Region A, our largest AOI had 47 million features, give or take a couple thousand. So that's a lot of data. That's a lot of rows and lots of tables, right? 
So our traditional QC checks, our software, we ran over this uh, data to find where the errors existed, especially with geometry, it took about 138 hours to run. And that was over multiple more bite-sized chunks of, these, of this particular data set. The Harris Attribute and Topology Checks, or Hatch, is, a, is our QC tool developed using a lot of PostGIS. Took 21 hours to run. I don't have a percent, I should have included that, but that's pretty dramatic time savings that was passed on to the customer in terms of here's time and some money that we don't have to spend looking for this and addressing errors that all of these errors are called using our Hatch tool versus having to go back and double check and make sure that we got everything. So in region A, uh, our second largest AOI was 31 million features. Again, um, well over 150 hours, so about 168 to be a little bit more precise. Yes, it's less features. Uh, you would think that there's some sort of rational formula to apply to that where this would take less time. This one actually took 168 hours to get through our traditional QC tools. Hatch took 20. <coughs> so we've cut it down by one eighth give or take, I mean, it's significant time savings just to run the tool. Um, the largest region C AOI was eight, eight and a half million features, give or take, 156 hours to run traditional QC tools. Hatch took 16 hours. Again, Hatch uses PostGIS to detect these and implement fixes. Well, some fixes in Hatch, there are separate tools we've got that actually do some more of the fixes that I mentioned earlier. Hatch is more of a detection. So again, this saves time by detecting it and provides more accurate true positive results to our analysts to go pinpoint and address these errors. You have anything to add? So I'd just like to add that most of Hatch is, is either attribution corrections or checks comparing geometries to geometries. And that's why it's so quick to use PostGIS versus uh, your traditional middleware where you're, uh, especially if you're trying to analyze 47 million features on a desktop it's gonna grind to a halt, but you can leverage that to a database, leverage the database's ability to scale vertically or if you're or horizontally, if you've got enough resource. And then your cost savings just, your, your, your time savings just explode. I mean. Also wanna mention that all of this has been run in an enterprise environment. We use SDE for our for database management, so we've been able to marry the two pretty happily. And with that, questions, comments, or, or applause? Up to you guys. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.